This could be it, boys. It is the best start we have ever had to a Premier League season with any side. Let's go look at the fixtures. So following on from the last episode, we got our best result of the season so far. A 1-0 victory at home against top of the table, Manchester City. Now, it did take them going down to 10 men in the 76th minute for us to find the breakthrough. Sokolov with the only goal of the game from the penalty spot in the 79th minute, but this was an absolutely huge win. We then beat Valerenga in the UEFA Conference League, Stamenkovic, Barton and Bamba with three goals to give us a 3-0 win. We then had a very narrow victory away from home against Huddersfield Town. We went 3-0 up through Korobov, Bomba and David Nuno, but then Korobov got himself sent off in the 48th minute and they came back into it in the second half, getting two goals back, but not the final third, so we got away with that one. And then we had a disappointing away draw against Manchester United. It's not often I'm going to say that as a newly promoted side. Luis de Cordova had put us 2-0 up inside 12 minutes. But then they just came back into the game more and more. And even on reflection, I still think we were the better side. But a point in the piece was probably fair. We then beat Lasan 6-0. Uh, Mario Buckle, Radek Rada, Trofinovic with a brace, Rui Rea and Stamenkovic with the goals. We were absolutely cruising in the Europa Conference League. We then beat Not uh, Nottingham Forest, the former side, 2-1 at home. Deco Dover and Guido Bomber with the goals in this one. They had equalised in the 79th minute. Thankfully, Bomber showed up in the 82nd to get a crucial goal to give us the win. Next up was a 2-1 away win against Newcastle United. Knee Learfield, a £61 million seal to Newcastle. Put them in front from the penalty spot seven minutes in. But Delonzo and Bomber got the goals back to give us a very, very fully deserved win. One of the most disappointing results of this run was a one all draw against Crystal Palace. Guido Bomber put us in front 44 minutes in, but Kenneth Zachariasen put their level things up for them in the 52nd minute and we could not make our dominance count. We then got beat off Vitesse in the UEFA Conference League, the Europa Conference League, whatever it's called. We got beat. Stomenkovic missed a penalty. It was a fully rotated side, but that defeat meant we ended up finishing second in our group. And I'm absolutely devastated about it because instead of going into the second knockout round, we go into the first knockout round. Following on from that, we got a one all draw against Spurs. Luis de, Cord de Cordova equalised in the 67th minute after Brett Santillan Jr. put them in front five minutes in. And it was a fully deserved point for either side, I think. And finally, it was a 4-0 home win against Southampton. The first half went by and I thought we were really going to struggle in this game. But Victor Hugo Cruz, Annabel Zarate and Frankie Grand came off the bench and got a brace to give us the 4-0 win. And this is how the Premier League table looks after those set of fixtures. We are level on points with Chelsea, who sit top 40 points after 18 games. Is by I think it's at least five or six points ahead of where we've ever been at this stage of the season. And obviously the two games today are absolutely massive. We face Watford at home and Liverpool at home. Liverpool obviously being the most difficult one. 10th Watford, 5th Liverpool. It is going to be huge. So Watford come at us with a pretty, pretty attack and formation, particularly away from home. I don't recognise too many of the faces, apart from Conor Salkin, or Calvin Salkin even. He was one of ours. Um, who, we had him at Crystal Palace. We signed him for pretty cheap in the Championship. He's now playing for Premier League Watford. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that, seeing how he's developed. He looks like a pretty well-rounded attack and midfielder or central midfielder. And uh, just happy to see some of our signings still playing in the Premier League. But here we go. Let's get the kick off and see if we can continue our superb run of form. First highlight of the game is a corner for us. Korobov plays it in. Bomber wins it. It's on the line. It eventually goes over. I have no idea what has just happened. Calvin Salkin is the man credited with the own goal. <laughs> Let's say that again during the replay. Korobov with the corner. Bomber wins it as he always does. Deco Dover should probably get that over the line, but it eventually does. Calvin Salkin, our former man, giving us the 1-0 lead. We will take that all day. But there is a highlight straight from kickoff. Watford coming forward through the centre of the park. It is played through nicely to Burgess. Oh, Bomber does well to get back and defend. But Salkin tries to make up for his mistake. The highlight ends there. I'm <laughs> pleased with that. It looked like Watford were going to get a clear-cut opportunity. Another highlight now. 22 minutes in. Can we double our lead? Korobov tries to get past the right back and he can't quite do it. And Watford do pretty well to keep the ball, or do they? The, yes, they do eventually give the ball away, as was expected. Sokolov to Bomber, who plays it out to the left-hand side for Korobov, who gets past his man. He gets it in the box and is whipped in. It's a poor cross. Considering that's one of his best attributes, I was hoping for a little bit better, Oleg. Can you do it this time? He gets to the byline, whips it in, back post around it to Dokodova. And that was a hell of a save by the Watford goalkeeper. 
The high leg does continue, though. Korobov once again on this left. Uh, that's it. Another high leg, 32 minutes in. Delonzo brings it down at the right hand side. Watford seem to press quite well, but we work the ball around them in a nice little neat triangle. And he whips it in. Zarate's in the box, and he can't quite get his shot away. The defender blocks it. And is that the highlight? Is it really? Aye, it was. We'll get a corner out of those. Zarate whips it in from post to Cordova's there. Another good save by the goalkeeper. I'm surprised he's on 6.8. He should be on more than that. Um, but entering into the end of the first half, it looks like we're going to go in 1-0 up. Fantastic performance so far. We just need to start taking our opportunities a little bit more consistently. One of the things that's definitely accompanied a more difficult run that we've had pre uh, in the previous five or so games has been our strikers not scoring so much. Um, Zorati and De Cordova not really getting on the score sheet recently. We've been relying on the likes of the midfielder, the likes of the wing-backs, so it will be nice to see if them can get back on the score sheet today. But the second half has gone by without much happening. It's nice to see Chris Dubelbiss having a good game in defensive midfield. Ten minutes of the game's just gone. Ten minutes to go. We'll have to make some changes. Delonzo, Stelvagen, uh, Guido Bomber. Do we really want to take off set centre half on the yellow card at 72%? We'll bring on Sackhouse for him. And we'll take off Korobov for Radek Rada to keep him fresh. This is the kind of game I would usually bring on Frankie Grand. But as it is so close... Only at 1-0. Watford could quite easily nick a point out of this. We need to keep our strongest first 11 as we can. Decord over. Brings the ball forward from the halfway line. His strike is poor. Corner with one minute to go. Zorati plays it in. It's played in the back post. And Branko Milanovic is there to put it into the back of the net. His first goal of the season. Another assist for Annabel Zorati. And we find ourselves 2-0 up. And we are getting three points out of this game. Fantastic performance from the boys. And uh, a thoroughly deserved three points. If I do say so myself. And there we have it then, Stoke City 2, Watford 0. Let's just praise the lads and I'll see you at the Liverpool game. Before we get to the game, Zerati has just won a European Golden Boy. 46 games, obviously not all for us. 22 goals, 25 assists. He really is a creative machine. Not really a goal scorer one though. Four goals in the Premier League in 19 games, but 14 assists. Nine goals and 21 assists in all competitions in 25 appearances. Obviously, the UEFA Conference League does sort of um, mess with them stats a little bit. You can't really take them too seriously due to the level of opposition we're playing. But 14 goals in the prem, uh, 14 assists in the Premier League in 19 games, is stupidly good, stupidly good, and I love them. Five million quid well spent. So we go to approach the Liverpool game. Looking at the match preview, we are actually listed as favourites against Liverpool. I know we're at home, but that is absolutely something special. We're both in relatively inconsistent form. Um, they've won 11 times, we've won once in the entire history of this year. So, uh, form's not on our side in terms of us against Liverpool. And maybe we might not be able to quite get over the line in this game. But we'll wait and see. We are missing Delonzo. He is suspended for today's game. We'll start with Stefan Polton goal, of course. Bomber and Nuno pick themselves. Stelvagen, Buckle and Korobov is going to start at left wing back, I do believe. Rui Rea... Uh, we'll start with Branko Milanovic in that central midfield alongside Sokolov, uh, Cruz, Zerati, Dekordova all start in our attacking lineup. We'll get Chris Dubelbis on the bench as well. And let's get into the game. Now, we've played Liverpool all sorts of times before. They do have one new addition, which is Paul O'Neill, a former man of ours who we never managed. We've actually signed him last season. He's, <laughs> he's turned into something a little bit superb. The Irish right midfielder, 75 caps for Ireland, 37 goals. He's doing great in the league for Liverpool. And if we are to get anything to deal, we need to keep this boy quiet. First highlight of the game comes four minutes in. Stelvagen whips the ball in. Decor Dover gets his head on it. It seemed to take an absolute age to get to the goal, but he does just knock it over. The first half has been absolutely enthralling as we come to the end of it. We have our second highlight. Victor Hugo Cruz with the corner. It's played in. It goes all the way to the six-yard box. Who is there? Zerati, how Zerati enough finish that? I mean, what's happening with corners? Defenders can't handle them, strikers can't finish. And uh, we should be 1-0 up, but we go in 0-0. We are dominating the match, which is good to see. Uh, hopefully we can continue that in the second half and actually get a goal this time. First highlight of the second half comes 54 minutes in as Hassan Sen coming down the left-hand side for Liverpool. Selvagen does hold him up and forces him back. But they do play it about well. And he gets past his man. He whips it in. Procker's there. Oh, man. They don't deserve this. Gently and Procker gets his fifth goal of the season. Puts Liverpool 1-0 up. We're not watching it again. We're going to demand some more from the boys. And hopefully that little goal just sparks them into some attacking creativity. 
with only 15 minutes to go. It doesn't seem to be working. We're going to get Korobov off for uh, Radek Rada. In terms of other changes, we'll bring on Rui Rea for Branko Milanovic in the centre of the park and hope that them two changes can spark something in us. We are going to go very attacking for the final 10 as well. Uh, we needed to get a goal back. Just a point, lads. Just a point, please. <laughs> please. Just a point. More direct. Higher tempo. Come on. Ah, oh, it's not going to happen. Four minutes of added time. There is going to be no highlight to talk of. And we're going to suffer defeat at home against Liverpool. Ah, ah, it's undeserved. It's undeserved. I don't care what you say. It's undeserved. Ah, oh, first defeat in a very long time in the league. And it comes to the hands of Liverpool. What does that do to the Premier League table? We currently now sit in third. Two points behind Manchester City sitting in top. One point behind Chelsea in second. But we are eight points clear from Barnsley in fifth position, which is no mean feat. We're still having a fantastic season, but that defeat does take the edge off it just a little bit. In terms of the next episode, then it will, of course, be the January transfer window. We've got a lot of big games in there. Wolves, Leeds, Norwich, Barnsley. A lot of former sides that were playing there. FA Cup as well, which I'm not too bothered about at this stage. If anything, I'd rather be knocked out of it. But unfortunately for us, our club vision is for us to reach at least the fifth round of the FA Cup. And I would like to meet that as we did feel it in the league cup in terms of our transfer budget and stuff we might find ourselves pretty limited i have already asked the board for more money they have uh, said no oh increased it's available again come on come on please nah they're not having it they're not giving us any more transfer budget even though they pinched 50 million quid off me what i had raised for the club through player sales and i'll stick to that <laughs> they've got 67 million pound in the balance with 73 projected i'm not why why wouldn't a board, an ambitious board, want to pump 40 million quid of that balance into the transfer budget to see if we can actually compete at the top end of the Premier League? I'm not sure why it's why they're not seeing it like that. So what we will have is around £10 million in the transfer budget with 123k available in the wages. We've got a couple of sellable assets what we could end up banking on. Chris Jubilbis is wanted by uh, Guanzu and FC Porto and might be able to make a sale there. He's currently valued at 22 million quid as well. We would sell him, bring in a loan player that would give us some money to be able to spend somewhere else. And also, um, where is he? Frankie Grand. Now, he's not wanted right now, but he's been wanted the entirety of the season. He's improving magnificently. And in a long-term save, there's absolutely no way I'd even consider that number. But at 23 million quid, if we were to get somewhere near that, you know, we could invest that in a really high quality player that might push us on that a little bit further. But that all remains to be seen. We will have to wait and see. I'm not particularly looking for anywhere either. I'm relatively content with our squad and our first 11 for the very first time in a long time. Wing backs, obviously, a place we can always look to improve, but it is difficult to find someone natural in that position. I won't be signing anybody who is not natural there. Uh, centre half maybe we could look with an improvement, maybe attacking midfield, maybe another striker. Basically, if there's anyone available who improves our first eleven for less than ten million quid, I will make the move. Other than that, I'll just be looking to try and raise some funds to be able to make a bigger signing. But anyway, boys, that is going to be enough from me today. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.